Now, ever thought about how the water you use affects your teeth? Perhaps you only think of water in relation to dental care as a cleaning agent. However, its impact can be far more damaging because of one unseen and tasteless factor, and that's fluoride. It's a mineral probably known most from toothpaste and from the general knowledge many have actually been told it is good for your teeth. However, toxic levels of the mineral have been detected in several estates across Nairobi, and it is primarily found in borehole water. I decided to do a deep dive and see just how bad the situation is on the ground and the adverse effect it is having on children's teeth in particular. When house hunting in Nairobi, more often than not, a prospective buyer or tenant wants to know, does it have a borehole? The perennial issue of water shortages in Nairobi's sprawling estates has made a borehole a major selling point in the real estate market. This is the reality for most Nairobians who have to rely on water kiosks, bowsers or mkokotenis hauling jerry cans like this full of the precious commodity. For those able to afford an apartment with reliable water supply in the green city in the sun, they are usually sourcing from a borehole. But have you stopped to consider what's in the water? Over 45,000 boreholes in Kenya, according to the Economic Survey 2023 by the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics. However, a closer look at the contents of that water paint a worrying picture. The fact is, depending on where you live in this country, all boreholes are not created equal. Our focus is on Nairobi, that is home to 4.4 million of us and counting. So previously in Nairobi, I'd say that the water that we had was municipal water. But because of the now the rapid uh, growth in population, plus climate change, um, people have resorted to using underground water. That is sinking boreholes for their uh, water and drinking needs. And it is that over-reliance on borehole water that that has experts like Dr. Wangeshi worried. The reason is a study by Davis and Shirtliff in 2021 found in Nairobi and other counties in the greater Rift Valley region experienced high levels of fluoride in the water. The study's findings lined up with data from various stakeholders in the water sector, including the ministry, that showed nearly 20 million Kenyans ingest toxic levels of fluoride and suffer from effects of high concentration of the mineral in groundwater. The recommended standards of fluoride in water should ideally be 0.5 to 1 milligram per liter. However, according to data from the Kenya Water Institute, the statistics coming out of Nairobi and its environments stretching to Machakos and Kiambu are staggering. For the first quarter of 2024, the report found Karen had the highest levels of fluoride in water at 18.7 milligrams per liter, followed by Kilimani at 12.6, then Siokimau, Utawala, Athiriva, Kangundo Road, Westlands, Ruaka, and Kiambu Road. So here's the problem with high levels of fluoride in your water. Fluoride is a soluble salt that occurs naturally in groundwater, foods, soil, and some minerals. The trouble is it has no color, taste, or smell, and can only be detected in a laboratory. But of more concern is what it's doing to teeth, especially in children. Well, overexposure to high fluoride levels uh, causes a condition in the teeth known as dental fluorosis, which damages the cells that lay down tooth structure, resulting in more porous teeth with brown or black stains like this. Dr. PJ Moruki, a dental surgeon, has been seeing more and more children coming to his clinic with similar symptoms. But you can imagine, Vicky, in 2015, the prevalence in children was 43%. So that is roughly one in every two children. So this is uh, an issue that is becoming, you know, endemic, especially in Nairobi. 
So we used to normally see uh, the issue of dental fluorosis uh, mostly in Nakuru and the Rift Valley, but right now we are seeing it more in urban centers. Uh, and therefore, uh, I can say that if another survey is done, I expect the, the prevalence to be even higher. It's a problem, he says, starts long before birth. Uh, and teeth formation, milk teeth, starts in the first trimester, all right, when you're still in your mother's womb. So if the, a pregnant uh, woman takes water that has high fluoride, it's able to, clo- to cross over to the child through the umbilical cord, and it will affect the formation of, uh, you know, the milk teeth. And the milk teeth will erupt, being very weak. David noticed his children's teeth were developing abnormally. However, at the time, he didn't think high fluoride levels in their Karen home was the main culprit. Started seeing white streaks on their teeth, like it's not being poly, I mean, uh, brushed properly. You'll try and, you know, look for paste, you know, use a scotch pad so that the teeth would look white. And I also used to visit, you know, dentist, but no one, or even pediatrician, no one mentioned anything about it. Like, are you exposing your kids to borehole water with a lot of fluoride? No. His son Ian had to endure bullying and constant questions about his teeth for years, as his parents desperately looked for a remedy. It was heartbreaking. Like every time you go to a dentist, you'd go with hope uh, that they would find a solution and you'd finally change and have like a normal childhood, like normal kids. But every time they would tell you uh, they don't have like a solution and that would be like breaking you. So it, it just made someone have like lose hope almost completely, thinking that they'll go from their childhood all the way up to adult to do the same teeth with no way to change it. Ian can now afford a smile, even though it costs a significant amount of money. And the most sustainable way of uh, dealing with, for example, severe case of dental fluorosis is doing crowns or veneers. Now, a good quality Emax or Zyconia crown would cost in the range of 50, 40 to 50,000, depending on where it's done. That is one tooth. Right? So most of the time, you find that we have to crown all the smiling teeth because you want to mask out that problem. So if you look at the cost per patient, it is astronomical. With such treatments out of reach for most parents, Dr. Morioki insists prevention is always the cheaper option. Questions have come up about the fluoride found in toothpaste and the effect it has on teeth. So fluoride becomes a devil when ingested, meaning you are taking it in. You know, you are swallowing it through the water, you are taking through the food that you've cooked with water that has fluoride. So when it is in circulation, then it becomes a menace, becomes a devil. But when fluoride is used topically, topically meaning that you are using it on the teeth, right? It is very important because it helps to remineralize the teeth and prevent dental caries. So that's why in toothpaste, you find that most toothpaste has have very high fluoride in them. And that is what we recommend as dentists because it helps in prevention of cavities. And what about boiling the water? The assumption is it would deal with the fluoride, but... Remember in primary school, we used to do science experiments where we would be asked if you take salty water and you boil it, does it become more concentrated or less concentrated? Definitely becomes more concentrated because there's some vapor that escapes. So now if you have water that has high fluoride and then you boil it, so the fluoride becomes even more concentrated. And I think at at this point it is also important to demystify something. There are people who say that fluorosis or discoloration of teeth is caused by salty water. It is actually not salty water, because when you talk of salt, we are talking of sodium chloride. But here, dental fluorosis is caused by fluoride. There are other ways of dealing with fluoride in your water source, and one is this. A filtration system that is actually one of many available on the market. What we have with our machine is that it rejects 
both inorganic and organic contaminants. When I say organic contaminants, is like bacteria, viruses, protozoa. Inorganic is like fluoride, which is my enemy right now. And the other thing is, um, you know, heavy, even heavy metals, it rejects all of them. But one other key thing that our machine does is that it actually also now adds uh, essential minerals so that you don't only take water that is like distilled water. You're taking water that is beneficial to you physiologically. Even though it is a step individuals can take within the home, it is still quite costly, with a unit going for almost 60,000 shillings to install. Stakeholders say more needs to be done at the policy level to ensure more regulation is brought into the real estate sector to control the number of boreholes being dug. Another proposal is to have the government map out areas with high fluoride levels across the country. Fluoride issue is a public issue, a public health issue, as I see it, in this lack of information. One, even in Nairobi, you see boreholes being drilled everywhere, even by Nairobi water. How sure are we that that water doesn't contain fluoride? The experts, the doctors that you go to, the ones you expect them to pick out if there's a problem. Now, if they don't see it's a problem, then how can you, an ordinary person, think it will be a problem in the future? That is the question David hopes more Kenyans ask to ensure something substantive is done about what is now becoming a fluoride menace in our water.